in the risk assessment, the, the end of the risk assessment is to find out what are the most critical risk. That is the, the, the end of the risk assessment. So the probability scores. What we do usually is to understand, and I've been repeating that because that risk event is uncertain, it has a probability of occurrence. Let's, and how, how I can determine the probability of occurrence? How, how I can do that? So you can maybe ask the expert, the expert on that task, someone that expert or someone that has experience on the task and ask and say, okay, uh, let's say painting a classroom, we have four walls and you can ask the person, okay, so that's the task, task of paint, paint a classroom or a room, a classroom, okay? You go to the expert, probably a painter, and you ask the painter, oh, what are the problems that you have faced in your life when you are painting the classroom? Oh, maybe, you know, the drywall. And when I try to paint, sometimes the drywall is damaged. And when I push, I, I, I find a, a hole in the, in the wall. So, and that's a problem. You say, oh, that's, that's a big problem. What's happened? No, if I, if I find that, I have to spend more money to fix. You, you take more time as well. So that is an impact on time and cost. I say, oh, that's a risk. And you have to go to the second question. Try to understand the probability of finding that kind of problem. How can you do that? The, the way we can do it, I'm going ask them, okay, expert, how many, or painter, how many rooms or classrooms have you painted before? Uh, I painted 200 classrooms in my life. Oh, 200, very good. How many problems like this have you found when you are painting the, those classrooms? And they say, oh, you know, maybe in 30 classrooms I have problems, okay? And that's the classroom, classrooms with problems, 30. What is the probability? What is the probability? The probability here is 30 divided by 200, that would be 0.15, that would be something around 15%. So you can use that, that interview to understand the probability. Based on that, you can make some decisions, okay? What we try to do here is try to give a numerical scale for the probability. What it means a numerical scale? Try to identify, it's difficult to, in some places we work with the, the, the probability in percent, but mostly it's better if you can classify that according to the project. And here we have idea. Maybe when you have one event in each hundred, in a hundred events, you may say probability here would be one percent. I would say that that's very low probability of having. If the probability is one in ten, that would be ten percent. I would say that low. One in five means twenty percent probability. I would say that's medium the probability. In our example here, I would say that that probability would be between low and medium probability. Usually when we do that, we can give numerical scales for that probability. Actually, we call, uh, usually instead of call uh, very low, we may give a numeric scale of one or a numeric scale of two or three or, or five. If I say that the probability scale is one, I'm saying that that probability is very low. If the probability or a scale of two, I say that probability is low. So that is the idea for probability score. But risk has two things, probability and impact. And also I can go here and try to understand cost. Let's take just cost and schedule as a, if you say that the cost increase is, the, the risk of cost increase is less than 1%, say that the impact on cost is very low. The schedule may be one day, not make any much difference. Of course, you have to consider here if it is in a critical path or outside the critical path, and things may, may change a little bit. Again, for impact, uh, we always create levels and we give some a numerical scale for them. One, two, three, four, five. So there are numeric scale. And that's why you, f you can find that table on the book, inside the book.
And also, if you that table is in the PM book, at least the last edition that I have with me, in which you we try to create a score for the impact. And that score means we go for one for very low impact, two for low impact, three for moderate impact, four for high impact, and five for very high impact. And here we have the four dimensions. We have cost, time, scope, and quality. So in cost, we are talking about cost increase. That's the, the, the negative factor for us. If it's insignificant or less than 1% or I can say that the, the, the impact on cost is very low. And then I can go up if it's more than the cost increase is more than 10%, between 10 and 20%, between 20, 40% and more than 40%. I will be classifying the impact from moving up on the scale and move from low, moderate to high, very high. The same thing I, we, we may talk about duration. Duration is something. It's another thing. If it's no major time change, but if you change more than 5% on the, on the time, it's a problem. It can be or cannot be a problem, but it's a low impact. But if you increase the activity time in more than 20%, that's a very high impact. Of course, here we're talking things that impact the project as well. So we have to look for activities in the critical path, not outside the critical path. Scope, you can move from low and to high as well. So the idea here, two types of score moving from low to high. How can you use that? And why we need a score for probability and a score for impact? We need that because it's important to calculate, and that is an important concept, what we call risk value. Risk value. What is risk value? Risk value, there is several definitions out there, but let's take the simplest, one, the simplest definition. We take the likelihood, that's the same thing of probability, and impact. So we have levels for a project that we attribute those scores when we are doing our assessment and for probability. Just interpreting uh, the table. Hardware malfunctioning, it's a very low probability. Someone that understand that task, that project, say that hardware malfunctioning is a very low impact. So very low probability. Hey, erase the, the word impact, please. Uh, high probability. And here maybe it's a system freezing, it's a low probability. Interface problem is a high probability. And then we cannot give scores to the impact. So the impact of interface problems is, according to the expert, is high. System freezing is very high. User backlash is medium impact. Okay. And how they, the, the, the expert, we can determine those numbers. Come back here and you have to understand cost time and determine that number. And we, how to calculate the risk value? We multiply the score of probability times the score for impact, and you can calculate the risk value. In this case, 4 times 4, 16. 2 times 5, 10. 4 times 3, 12. 1 times 5, 5. Why we need to do that? Why we need to do that? That's an important message. How determining the risk value help in the risk management because risk with high probability and high impact have higher risk value. Risk with low probability and low impact has uh, have lower uh, lower risk value. So we can say that the risks with the highest risk value are the most important, most critical. Okay, the most critical risk. What is the most critical risk in that small table? What is the most critical risk? Interface problems. What is the least important risk in that table? What is the least important? Hardware malfunctioning. Hardware malfunctioning is very low probability, although the impact is very high, five is the very high impact, but the probability is very low, so the risk value. What is the second most critical risk? User backlash, yes. So that's the second, and that's the third risk. So it's important to understand which risks are more critical for the project, which one are the least critical. That's why we do the risk assessment. And let's talk about how, how to show those things to a customer in a simple way, in a simple way that a customer can, can understand. So we use a diagram, <coughs> sorry, a diagram called risk severity matrix. Use a diagram called risk severity matrix. 
let's understand that diagram. What is a risk matrix? We put two uh, dimensions on the on the on a chart. So we draw a vertical line, and that vertical line will show the level, uh, the probability. And actually, looking uh, if we have very high probability, high, medium, low, or very low probability. And this is related to the probability score. So you can go for low, very low probability score one, low probability score two, medium probability score three, high probability score four, very high probability score five. And you put the horizontal line, the impact on the project outcomes. And here again, we may have low, very low, low, medium, very high, and very high. So we can put here the E scores for E scores for the impact. Okay? The E score for the impact. So we have here a diagram that we can make easier for the customer to understand how rich are the risk of the project. And here you can just put some, some areas, situations. Let's like say down here. Let's go down here, okay? We have low impact, low probability. So you have something happen, an event, a risk that has low impact, low probability. And you don't have to be concerned about that risk. If it happened, a very low probability of happening. And if it happened, a low impact. So it's something that we do in an area like here. You don't need to be concerned because here we have low probability, 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 and low impact. Okay? That region over here. But on the other hand, we may have a region around here. And I'm trying to shadow in a red, in which we may have, we may have, what would happen in that red region? Red region. That, that's a region. We have the red region, high uh, probability of happening, of occurring. It means that. Uh, that event is more likely to occur, and if that thing that is more likely to occur actually happen, you have a high impact on the project. So that risk matrix is an easy way to show to the customer. If you start putting risks in that area here, you can show the oh here uh, it's an area in which we don't have to be concerned, but here other risks risk that we need to focus on and pay attention because those are very critical. Just coming back to that uh, analysis that we did, let's put here the risks. So we have interface, the interface, the interface is probability level four, impact level four, so it is here. So that is the risk, what's the name? Uh, interface problems. So here I would put interface problems. Interface, interface, problems. Okay, let's, let's take another one here. here. We have uh, hardware, uh, let's say the second one, system freezing. Two and five. Two, two the probability and five, five. It's, it's here. Okay, so, so that, that is system freezing. Okay. Then, then we, we have, have another one. one. We have user backlash. Four and three. three. Four probability and, and three impact. impact. And that's here. So it's uh, so so that, that one, one here is user backlash. That's, that's very common. common. They don't like, like the software. software. And, and we, we have, have the last, last one that is one in five. One probability and five probability here. That is hardware 
hardware, all functioning. So what we can see from that risk severity matrix, it's easy to to show that we may have risk in a red area, and that just the color skin shows some kind of uh, uh, information to the client. Or you can have other risks that are in uh, you, you don't have to be aware of. And in the middle, we have some kind of a, uh, orange risk. So that is a, a good way to show your risk in a, for a customer. Why do I say that? Because it's easier for the customer to understand that diagram instead of going to a risk list of risk and you reading risk values and try to interpret risk values that the customer doesn't, understand, doesn't know what does it mean. We work hard to help you to get better marks, be prepared for job interviews, and excel in work meetings. You can send your questions in the comment area below. I will be pleased to answer all of them. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe Americo e-learning.